Welcome back. Let's code our own bubble sort algorithm. I'm going to create a function called bubble sort that's going to take in an array. And I have an array up here for us of these numbers. And ideally, when we enter this array into this function, it spits out a sorted array. And based on the animation that we saw, we ideally start from the beginning, compare first and second item, swap out the items if the left one is larger than the right, and keep going, keep going, keep going until the largest item ends up in the last index, and then we loop over things again. The first thing I want to do is say that I'll just create a variable so I don't have to keep repeating myself. I'll get array.length here, which will be the length of this item, which should be 10, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Never mind, it's 11. And in here, we'll do a for loop. And we'll say let i equals to 0, which will be the first index of the array. i is less than length i plus plus. And within here, we grab the first item, we now want to compare it to 44, and so on and so forth. We should know this by now. We want to add another for loop, j is going to equal zero, j is going to be less than length, and we'll say j plus plus. Now in here, we'll say that if array j at index of zero, so that is 99, is greater than array j plus one, that is 44. So if 99 is greater than 44, in the first loop, we'll say, let's swap numbers. So we can simply do that by saying, creating a temporary variable that holds array at j, which the first pass, it'll be 99 and give the first index of zero to array j plus 44, or plus one, which is 44. And 99 now goes into the second index, so that means array j plus one is going to equal array j. You might need to pause the video to really understand this, but all we're doing is just swapping numbers if the left-hand side is bigger than the right-hand side. And once that is done, we increment j to 1 so that we compare index of 1 and 2, and then we compare index of 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, until we bubble things up, and then we go to the top and compare the items again in the outer for loop. Let's see if this works. Oh, and I just realized this array j should be temp here. So remember... 99, we placed it into a temporary variable and assigning it to the index to the right. So if we run bubble sort now, we'll say numbers and we'll console log numbers to see if it's sorted. If I hit run, oh, console log numbers, make sure I can spell. Let's hit run. And look at that. Our list is now sorted. That was bubble sort. And as you can hear, we have two nested for loops giving us O of n squared, but we're not really holding variables to another data structure or holding the numbers into other data structures. So the space complexity is O of one. As we can see in our big O cheat sheet, bubble sort is probably not the best algorithm, although it has good space complexity. You can use the code that I'll leave for you in this lesson to play around with. But for now, let's go on to our next sorting algorithm. Congratulations, you've just completed your first sorting algorithm, but we have more to go. So let's go to the next one.